Good evening. Oh, wait a minute. We have to try that one more time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kathy Nicholas. And I am Nicole Nicholas. And together we are the Nicholas, Nicholas Sisters. Sisters. <laughs> we are thrilled to be here tonight to talk to you about this incredible legacy that we're trying to be great stewards of. So Fayard and Harold Nicholas, also known as the Nicholas Brothers, Throughout their career, though, they were known as the showstoppers because they were quite literally that, meaning that if they were on the program, they were closing the show. No act wanted to follow them. Gregory Hines, in an interview, said that if there was ever a film made about their lives, that it would have to be computer generated because no one could move as they did. George Balanchine could not believe that they never took a ballet lesson. And Fred Astaire is quoted as saying that their routine in stormy weather is the greatest dance routine ever captured on film. So it's nice to reminisce about what their friends and their peers said about them. But tonight, we hope to share a couple of stories with you, kind of walk down memory lane a little bit, hopefully share some things with you that you've never heard before, and talk about them from the perspective of Grandpa Fayard and Uncle Harold. We love sharing this, uh, there's a photo in the corner, I love that one, that's our dad, um, with his dad, Grandpa Fayard, practicing the splits at their home. Um, here's a few photos, that's, that's in front of the Hollywood Palladium, and on the bottom, you see us sharing the stage with our grandfather, when we were a little younger, and then a little older. Um, we got to travel around the world with the Nicholas Brothers for about 15 years into our early adulthood, and it was such a treat. So, to talk about their life a little bit more, we're gonna time travel back about 100 years to Philadelphia in the early 1920s, where it all started, the Standard Theater in Philadelphia. The Nicholas Brothers were children of musicians. Their father played the drums and their mother played the piano. They were both college graduates and they had a band called The Collegians. And just like any other child, my grandfather went to work with his parents and he loved sitting in the front row. And just by watching the other performers and entertainers, he taught himself how to dance. That's right, the Nicholas brothers have never had a formal dance lesson in their lives. Say what? Oh, you heard me. The Nicholas brothers have never had a formal dance lesson in their lives. So tonight, we'll actually share a couple of home videos. We actually have hours and tons of home footage as a family. So this right here is my grandpa Fayard doing what he does best, practicing. He's standing or flipping on the front lawn of their house, and you can see him do one hand, two hands, and he would tell us stories how he would jump over the fire hydrant, land in the splits, or even just slide out on the fire escape of their apartment. And seven years later, when my Uncle Harold was born, Grandpa Bayard then taught Uncle Harold how to dance, and that is how they became the Nicholas Brothers. So then they had an act. And they started performing at the Standard Theater where their parents were playing. And pretty soon, their parents quit their day job and started managing the boys full time. They were successful in Philadelphia, which led to opportunities for them to perform in Baltimore and then Washington, D.C. Then they got the ultimate invitation, and the whole family picked up and moved to Harlem as they were headliners at the Cotton Club. Here you see programs with them headlining along Cab Calloway. Um, you see a program from the Cotton, uh, the Cotton Club. And here's a really awesome photo at the bottom. Um, you see Harold is standing in front of a cake. It was his 13th birthday. And this is taken backstage at the Cotton Club. Standing behind Harold is the Cab Calloway. Next to him is Ethel Waters. And behind Fayard is Duke Ellington. Now, I've heard about some epic 13th birthday celebrations, <laughs> but I don't know how many quite live up to this. And I think you can also see in that program that dinner and a show was a dollar and 50 cents. <laughs> Which we wish we could time travel to, right, in this world of inflation. It's $10 eggs out here. <laughs> like, what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> it's the Fed interest rate hikes for that. Yeah, but exactly. in any case, um, what this also captured is how talented they were so young and the world in which they came up with. 
and how they were embraced. And even during their time at the Cotton Club, they were given really special opportunities, like being the only person amongst their peers who was able to go and mix and mingle with the all-white patrons at the Cotton Club, an opportunity not afforded to their co-stars. Another really awesome part about these home movies that span 15 years all over the world is the times where they captured the marquee and you can see their name in lights. It's also really special to see Harlem come alive at this time. Here you see Bill Robinson and Louis Armstrong playing on one side of the street. We pan across to see the Cotton Club, see their name, just playing. I mean, think about the mecca of culture that Harlem was at this time. Also in the home movies, we get to see marquees from places like Las Vegas with their name in lights, selling out houses, where they couldn't stay in those hotels or even enter in the front stage. It's a really remarkable time and even more special to see how they are first class every time you see them. And really special that we have, again, a glimpse to look back in time. Another bit of the home movies that we want to share with you today is not showing and talking about their life on stage, but seeing them at home. So these home movies are from right after they moved to Harlem. These are captured outside of their apartment in Harlem in the neighborhood in Sugar Hill. And for those of you who are familiar with Sugar Hill, know that their neighbors included also Thurgood Marshall and W.B. Du Bois and Cap Calloway and Duke Ellington, U.B. Blake. These were the people that were walking down the streets during days like this. They lived in Sugar Hill the entire time that they lived in New York. And as a family, we got to go back here about six months ago and walked the same street. That awning is still there today. It was really moving. But there you see their father. There's their mother in a full-length mink coat. And you see the boys um, looking stellar, just enjoying time together as a family. Um, even in one of the home movies, we have time from them going to Yellowstone National Park. And they are in a full suit. A whole suit. With a, a vest suit. and a tie at the park. <laughs> So it's just a testament to their parents, their brand, and how you see their movie images with them looking so great. But they look first class, again, everywhere they went. During their time in Harlem and performing at the Cotton Club, uh, Hollywood producers and studio executives would come and see the boys perform. Uh, this is when they got their first opportunity to be stars in their first feature film, Kid Millions, uh, filming in Los Angeles. So while the mother took the boys to Hollywood, the father then came to visit them driving to Hollywood, and unfortunately he was tragically killed in a car accident. So the mother truly became the matriarch and manager of the family. We actually have documentation of her telling stories how she had to make deals with the gangsters who owned the Cotton Club. And gangsters was the real word, right? Gangsters is a quote. It's a quote. <laughs> the gangsters own the Cotton Club. Yes, they ran the, the Cotton Club. The gangsters own the Cotton Club. So it's just a testament to this fantastic black woman, Viola Nicholas, uh, making deals and standing up for her young black boys in a time where obviously the world was not so nice to people of color. Viola Nicholas managed the boys until they both got married. So I'm sure you guys have seen the Nicholas brothers in movies and they're older and taller, but they have been stars from a very young age. Here you can see them with Josephine Baker. Right in the middle, you can see how little my Uncle Harold was with Nina Mae McKinney. And over to the far side, this is a still shot of some home videos that we have of them tap dancing on a back lot with Fred Astaire. So as was a theme in their career, success led to more success. So at this point, they were stars of the stage. They were performing all over. They had done a number of Broadway shows, including George Balanchine's Babes in Arms. They had done a number of shorts, and they started getting their first entree into Hollywood. And then they got an incredible opportunity to do a six-picture deal with 20th Century Fox. Here is an original letter that we still have. Um, it's written from Nat Lefkowitz, who was the co-chairman of William Morris Agency at the time. He's writing to their mother, manager, momager, um, congratulating her on the deal and saying how pleased he was that um, he had just closed the deal. And that opportunity led to these six films. Hopefully you've had a chance to see their routines in all of them. They're all really different and quite special. My personal favorite is Down Argentina Way. Harold spoke eight languages fluently, and at the top of that routine, he starts off singing beautifully in Portuguese. 
Bayard also would talk about how every new film, they would try to outdo themselves in what they did in the old film. They were always trying to find new ways to wow the audience. So if you know any of these routines, you know some of them are tap, some of them involve tricks with handkerchiefs. Orchestra wives involved Harold running up the wall, doing a backflip up in the air and landing in the splits. So in any case, this incredible series of films ultimately ended with stormy weather in 1943. And right after that, Grandpa Fayard was drafted for World War II, which obviously shook things up a bit. In addition to those six films, they had a number of collaborations. Uh, the one in the top corner is actually my favorite from the film The Pirate, starring Gene Kelly. Right next to that is the Nicholas Brothers posing from the movie Sun Valley Serenade with the beautiful Dorothy Dandridge, who was the first black woman to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Female Actress. Right next to that, they're performing live with Carmen Miranda. And down at the bottom, they're tap dancing for the troops of the Vietnam War with Bob Hope. Right in the middle, they're dancing with their good friend, Cap Calloway. And I know this one's a little blurry, but that is them with Michael Jackson on The Jacksons Show. And yes, my grandpa Fayard taught Michael and Janet Jackson how to tap dance. If you're familiar with the Janet Jackson music video, All Right With Me, I don't know if any of you have seen it or seen it lately, but it's really nice to see them in their late 60s dancing there. Also, Cap Calloway's in that um, music video with them as well. So to see them even celebrate them, even in, towards the end of their careers. Full circle. My grandpa Fayard used to say, I've done everything in showbiz, except opera. And that is true. Uh, you guys may know them as fantastic singers and dancers, but they were also incredible actors. Uh, so on the top row, there are a couple of movies that they filmed. Uh, the top one, uh, Grandpa Fayard is with Lola Falana. Right in the middle, Uncle Harold in Uptown Saturday Night with Bill Cosby and Academy Award winner Sidney Portier. And even in the corner, Uncle Harold playing Sarge in The Five Heartbeats, directed by Robert Townsend. Down at the bottom, again, it's just a snippet of some of the amazing things that they did. Multiple Broadway shows, multiple recording albums, a series of television performances, and my grandpa Fayard won a Tony Award for his choreography in the Broadway show Black and Blue. And by the time we were born, we got to see them take a victory lap. We got to see them travel all over the world and be celebrated by their friends and peers for a career that spanned over 70 years. We got to see them get their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, an honorary doctorate degree from Harvard, be celebrated by the Kennedy Center Honors. Throughout their career, they performed for seven US presidents and kings and queens all over the world. And here's Grandpa Fair in his 80s with the then President Clinton. What a life. What a legacy. What a legacy. Um, and so now to close us out, we're going to do it in the only way that's fitting for these showstoppers. That means letting them have the final moments to close us out. And we're going to have a little help from Grandpa Fair to tee up the clip, because if we just said it, you probably wouldn't believe us. But we're going to show the final stair sequence in Stormy Weather. We can't show the whole clip, which almost feels blasphemous <laughs> because of time. So if you haven't seen the whole thing, please do. But that clip. That, that routine was never rehearsed before it was captured on film. Can you say that one more time? That routine was never rehearsed and before it was captured on film, and they did it all in one take. One take. So with that, please enjoy the greatest dance routine ever captured on film. The Nicholas Brothers performing Jump and Jive, played by Cap Calloway in his orchestra, in the 1943 musical with a phenomenal all-black cast, 20th Century Foxes, Stormy Weather. Before we did that, Nick Castle said to us, don't rehearse it, just do it. Now we knew what we were going, supposed to do, but never rehearsed it. But did he know what you were going to do? Oh, he knew. Oh, he knew. So he had directed that. I thought this was your creation. Yes, go ahead. Well, that would, that, that would see us away. Yes. But let me tell you mine later. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Dancing around the officer, that was my brother's idea. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And so Nick Hassel had this idea. Jumped up. I said, don't do it. So we did this jump up, and we did that in one take. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We did it. We just... <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. 